This factory down in Hornsey, London, has been in constant production since 1890, and no wonder. For the things it turns out are always in demand. Solid lead ingots are melted, moulded and cast. Skilled workers bring all their experience to bear so that each generation of children shall satisfy their fascination for toy soldiers. Toy soldiers date all the way back to the time of the pharaohs. First made from wood, stone, clay and metal and produced for families of nobility and wealth, it wasn't until the end of the 18th century that toy soldiers began to be mass produced. Toy soldiers were the first globally collected boys toy and as the popularity of toy soldiers reached its peak in the early half of the 20th century, one manufacturer set the standard by which all others are measured, the William Britton Toy Soldier Company. Just the words toy soldier can bring a smile to the face of those with a love of history and the joy of play. Whether the affection is for plastic, metal or resin toy soldiers, the passion for these little figures is universal. Today, toy soldiers have outgrown their intended purpose of being simply a boy's toy and are now collected by adult enthusiasts all over the world. And there are none more sought after than toy soldiers from the W. Britton Company. Hello toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome to an Analog Toys special feature. The History of the William Britton Toy Soldier Company The founder of the W. Britton Company was William Britton Sr. and his original trade was that of a brass clockmaker. However, the business which made the W. Britton Company a household name during the 20th century was that of a toy soldier manufacturer. Prior to 1893, German manufacturers had dominated the toy soldier market until, as if from nowhere, the W. Britton Company launched its first hollow cast toy soldiers. Hollow casting was a revolutionary process where molten lead was poured into a figure mould and before the entire figure could set, some of the molten metal was poured back out again. This process meant that the lead would form a skin on the inside of the mould, but by pouring the molten lead back out again, it would leave the figure hollow in the centre. With each toy soldier containing less metal, which was the most expensive component in the figure, W. Britain were able to achieve a lower retail price and thus compete with the more expensive German-made figures from the period. From 1893 onwards, W. Britain continued to grow and evolve as the holocast toy soldier gained in popularity. Standing 54mm tall, which is still the industry standard today, these toy soldiers were miniature hand-painted representations of military personnel from all the armies of the world. By 1931, the company employed 450 people at its London factory, and the catalogue had expanded to 435 different sets, with 20 million models being produced each year. But children aren't the only customers. Many adults find collecting them an absorbing hobby, combining history and pageantry in miniature. But just the same, the majority are destined for many a hectic battle on hearthrugs the world over. Little changed with the style of the figures until the late 1950s, when the introduction of plastic figures from companies such as Herald made Britain sit up and take notice, so they too began production of plastic toy soldiers. 1966 marked a turning point in the history of toy soldiers, when international concerns about lead poisoning brought about new laws that banned the manufacture of toys containing lead. W. Britain, the best known producer of 1 to 32 scale metal figures, ceased production of metals in 1966 and focused exclusively on plastic figures. In 1971, the W. Britain Company first introduced the Britain's detail line of toy soldiers. These toy soldiers were an extremely popular product in the 1970s and 80s. Manufactured in England, these plastic figures were finished with hand painted details and came with sturdy metal bases made from a material called Zamac. The new Britain's detail figures were produced in PVC and used plug-in type arms which were glued to bodies resulting in poses previously unavailable. Figures were moulded with a T-shaped foot lug on the feet of each figure that allowed secure attachment to the sturdy metal bases. These rectangular metal bases ensured figures stood better than the products produced by rival manufacturers and paid homage to Britain's hollow cast metal figures as well as being thought of by consumers to be of better value due to their heavier weight. The Britain's detail range are my personal favourites, partly because I grew up with them, but also because these toys were still manufactured for children and not aimed at the adult enthusiast. It isn't child's play making toy soldiers, and it isn't children who purchase and play with these tin soldiers once they're made. It's grown men.
Today, it's his grandson, Dennis Britton, who gets complaints from all over the world if his horse trappings are a shade off the authentic colour, or if his rifle regiment march with arms at the slope when they should be at the trail. But metal or plastic, with their 24 karat gold-plated band instruments, what a spectacle they make. The Britain's Toy Company was not only known for its toy soldiers, but also for its die-cast range of miniature vehicles, which first began production just after the Second World War. With their Massey Ferguson Combine Harvester even being voted UK Toy of the Year in 1978. The W. Britain Company continued to prosper throughout the 1970s and into the 80s, when, in 1983, Britain's launched its first all-metal figure in nearly 20 years. Although the company had introduced a die-cast metal Scots Guard set in 1973, these soldiers still featured plastic weapons, so they couldn't be called true metal models. The new 1983 sets were harking back to William Britain's past, and it appears they may have been designed to capitalise on the growing collectible nostalgia market in the early 80s, as well as the flourishing tourist trade in London. The first few sets featured typical ceremonial subjects such as lifeguards, the Black Watch and Yeoman, and proved popular enough that by 1984 the Britain's metal models range had begun to grow. The next big change to take place was also during 1984, when the first sale of the W Britain's company took place, with the company name changing to Britain Petite Limited in 1986. The metal models range continued to appear in the main Britain's catalogue during the 1980s until 1987, when it was finally decided that these lines were collectibles rather than toys, and as such were given their own special four-page catalogue. During the late 80s, the popularity of these new metal toy soldiers continued to expand with collectors the world over. Until finally in 1993, the year of the William Britton centenary, the W Britton Collectors Club was launched. This exclusive club still continues today and has thousands of members scattered all across the globe. In 1997, US toy company Ertl purchased the W Britton company, primarily for the farm series, not the toy soldier business as Ertl was an already established manufacturer of farm toys in the USA and thought the Britain's farm lines would be a good addition to its company. Ertl, however, did not hold on to W Britain for very long, as in 1999, the entire Ertl company, including W Britain, was bought out by the even larger US toy company, Racing Champions. Under the Racing Champions company, the W Britain brand continued to grow, especially the newest style matte connoisseur painted figure ranges Ertl had begun to produce in the late 90s. These figures were a distinct change to the traditional gloss figures Britons had produced for over 100 years. As Racing Champions continued to grow as a toy company, it wasn't long before the decision makers realised that the W Britain toy soldiers were a very small part of their overall business. So in September 2005, the small US collectible company First Gear acquired the W Britain toy soldier brand. By now, the W Britain company seems to have come full circle. What was once started as a small family business was once again owned by another small family business. The only difference being this time the family was American, not English. The W Britain Toy Soldier range thrived under the guidance of First Gear until 2016, when the 123 year old brand was sold to the Good Soldier LLC, located in Ohio, USA. This new company is owned and operated by toy and model figure collectors who are dedicated to continuing William Britain's commitment to quality and authenticity. In the modern world, collecting toy soldiers remains one of the most passionately followed hobbies, and with their high quality, diverse range, beautiful sculpting and wonderful paint applications, it's no surprise that the William Britton brand continues to be the market leader of the toy soldier industry. The W Britton brand of toy soldiers really does hold a very special place in my heart. It's because it's these products that actually started my lifelong passion for collecting toys. This is because when I was a child, my father and I bonded over trips to our local toy shop. I would be there on the hunt for the newest action man figure or uniform, and while there, my dad would pick up some Britain's toy soldiers and take them home with us, where he proudly displayed them in a cabinet in our living room. Watching my father through my childhood eyes as he collected toys obviously inspired me from a very young age, and I think from the time I was about four, I always knew I would follow in his footsteps and grow up to be a vintage toy collector and this lifelong inspiration is the greatest gift he's ever given me.